RC is in the house. Give Conrad and them nigga hand. We getting ready to lift up the name of Jesus. So don't do they did don't do like they did when I was a kid. You know, I say half of my speech, they go, bless your heart. You know what that meant. But we gonna give them a good hand of praise. Our leaders have been working with our children, and we're glad about it. They've been putting the work in. So give our leaders a hand. They giving themselves a hand, because they can't hear y'all clap. Y'all give them a hand again. <laughs> All Amen. right, good morning, Sky Bridge. I said good morning, Sky Bridge. Good morning. Yes, today is the day that the Lord has made. This morning's scripture is going to come from Galatians chapter 4, starting at verse number 4. And it reads, but when the time was right, God sent his son. And then a woman gave birth to him. His son obeyed the law so he could set us free from the law. And we could, we could become God's children. Now that we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. And his spirit tells us that God is our father. So now you are no longer slaves. You are God's children, and you'll be given what he has promised. Father God, we thank you so, so much for coming down. Father, we thank you that you came when you came, Father God. We, we thank you that you, you walked amongst us. You walked with us. And we, at, we thank you that you continue to walk through us, Father God. So, Father God, right now we pray for the word that is coming. Father God, bless the speaker. We know that this is your word, so move him aside and speak through him, Father God. And as we sit here, we pray that you open our minds so that we, we may understand you. We open our hearts that we, we may feel you, Father God. We pray for the children as they perform today, Father God. Bless them. Be with them, Father God. And that we pray for the church in a whole, Father God. Just continue to guide each and every one of us, Father God. In this season of giving and love and joy, we pray for those that may have lost someone, Father God, that you comfort them right now. And let them know that they are not alone, Father God. And pray that each and every one of us are there for each other. As iron sharpens iron, let us sharpen each other, Father God. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Y'all can have a seat. We're going to start with our children. Y'all give them a hand as they come. Hello, Introduce your, excuse um, me, Ryan. excuse me. All right, give it to us loud and proud. Tell us who you are. Hello, everybody. My name is Dominic Ochoa, and I'm going to be saying a, a script by Ronald Doe or a poem. Christmas time is finally here. It only comes for once a year, and it's time to spread good cheer to those we love and hold so dear. Christmas time is a time of glee, a time when peace and love run free. A time when those like you and me who sit beneath the Christmas tree. Christmas time is a time of joy, a time to sit back and enjoy. The smile on each girl and boy as they play with their Christmas joy. Christmas time is a time to share the passing of another year. Birth of Jesus, a joyful prayer to show loved ones how much we care. Christmas time is a time for song, a time for us to get along, to make us feel Lord Jesus strong. Forgive all those who did us wrong. Christmas time is a time to pray. Put love and kindness on display. Show compassion along the way. Christmas time should be every day. Now I'm going to, now I'm going to be saying, now I'm going to be saying a script by Isaiah, chapter nine, verse six. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace.
morning, everybody. My name is Conrad, and I will be saying a poem from Paul Gilbert. It's called, It's Still About Jesus. For every Christmas carol we sing, for every present under the tree, for every child that smiles with glee, it's still about Jesus. For all the joy the season brings, for every shiny, glowing thing. For every Christmas light that shines without, it's still about Jesus. For all the joy of giving is in the air. Also the bounty of many blessings with much to spare. With food beyond measure in which we shall feast. For every Christmas light, With food be our measure in which we shall feast. The rejoicing of precious life makes it all complete. Giving thanks through prayer is a timely pleasure, for the birth of our Savior is the greatest treasure. For with hope and grace in which we are so faithfully found, the love of our Lord God in which we are found. Brings to my remembrance of how Christmas began. A Savior was born to save the souls of all men. Thank you.
C is for Christ. H is for hope. R is for rejoice. A is for I am. T is for at. A is for dog. D is for Daisy. A is for Messiah. Give him another hand. Our children did a wonderful job. Give him another hand. Wonderful, wonderful. All right. But truly today is, this is the day that the Lord has made. So we're going to continue to rejoice and be glad in it. How many know Emmanuel?
We're going we're gonna to sing Emmanuel, right? So we're going to get ready. So we're going to have the words, but we need you guys to give us some hand clapping so we can start. So if you get, don't get tired yet. Come on, we're going we're gonna to worship him today. He has kept us through January, through December. God has been a good God to us. We'll sing it a couple times so you can catch on, right? Ready? One, two, three, come. Come. Let us adore him. Come, let us adore him.
is truly worthy to be praised. His name is Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Jesus, oh, what a wonderful child. Y'all not tired yet, are you? Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Jesus, oh, what a wonderful child. Give Sister Leah a hand. Sister D is going to sing Jesus, oh, what a wonderful child. Come on, clap your hands. Let's go. going to behold the lamb while we get ready for our sermon today. Mm -hmm. 
take your own little sanctuary to, to God right in your space. The precious Lamb of God, born into sin, born into sin, that I may live again. The precious Lamb of God. We're going to do it. Now behold the Lamb. Now behold the Lamb. You can come if you want to. The precious lamb. This is our altar. If you feel like coming, you can come out. Born, born into sin that I may live again. The precious lamb of God. Holy is the lamb. sacred altar if you want to come and pray you can do whatever you want to do oh god why you love me so why you love me so lord i shall never know the precious lamb if you just want to come and kneel and pray holy is the lamb holy Precious Lamb of God. The precious Pray for my sister right now in the name of Jesus. Born into sin that I may live again. The precious Lamb of God. You can come. This is a sacred altar. But I'm standing here. But I'm standing here. 
Let me encourage you this morning while the praise team is still singing. If you have a prayer need or a prayer request, Sister Beverly started it. Just come on down to the front. We want to pray this morning before we get started. Uh, whatever your prayer need may be between you and the Lord, I'm going to pray for all of us. Whether it's your health, your finances, your marriage, your life. We've been through some some tough days in 2021. I was talking with Brother Cleo and Sister Bertha Jones in the back earlier, and we were all sharing about how we've all gone through some turbulent times here in 2021. So let me encourage you to do this. You're not praying to Pastor Howlton. You're praying to Jesus Christ. And this is the way prayer works. We pray to the Father through the Son in the power of the Holy Spirit. It's tough. But we want to get prayers through. We want God to hear us. Y'all come on over. We, just got, we got room right here in the middle. Come on over. Come on. Come on over. So whatever your prayer need is. Bring it before the Lord and let him take care of it. You want to pray for your children, your grandchildren, your marriage, your home, your family. We got some new fresh faces. We got new babies in the house. We got new starts. And as we say goodbye to those we've lost in 2021, we want to say hello to those who are just coming on the scene in 2021. But we want to lift it all up to the Lord because Scripture makes it plain. We don't even know what to pray for and how to pray. And if you're honest, there are some times in our lives where we run out of words. And our hearts are crying out for us. But the good news is that God even hears our moans and our groans. And so even when you got prayer needs, 
that you can't find the words. He hears. And somehow, I can't explain it, but the Holy Spirit grabs our feelings and our emotions. And he translates it to the Father that he hears it. And he knows exactly what your needs are. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we bless your holy and your righteous name. So here I am again. Here I am again, your servant who comes to your throne of grace. It's not like you don't know me. You heard me last night. You heard me this morning. And I'm grateful that you heard me 10 years ago, 20 years ago. 50 years ago, five minutes ago, and you know my needs and you know my prayers. Lord, we come before you because there's nowhere else to go. You sit above the supreme courts. You are God who reigns and you reign all by yourself. And for that, Lord, we're grateful that you are sovereign, you are everywhere, you know all of our needs, all of our, our pleas, our, our passions, our hearts. And I pray this morning now, Lord, on behalf of those who have congregated this morning in the sanctuary and those who are joining us on social media, that you hear our prayers this morning. There are times in our lives where we feel like our prayers don't get past the ceiling. I don't know why that is. Sometimes it's, it's sin in our way. Sometimes it's frustration in our way. And sometimes the enemy, Satan, discourages us. It makes us think that you don't care. It makes us think that you didn't hear our needs. It makes us think that we're all by ourselves. But, Lord, I'm reminded in Scripture where you reminded us, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I'm always there with you. I remember the rhetorical questions that you asked. Are God's two arms too short that he can't rescue? Or his ears too dull that he can't hear? Oh, Lord, thank you that you remind us afresh. Just when we're ready to throw in the towel, just when we're ready to give up, just when we think you've forgotten all about us, you tell us afresh, I love you. I love you so much, I sent my only son to die for you. I made you. I created you. And surely, if you can make us, God, you can take care of us. So now, Lord, we turn it all over to you. We're tired of trying to fix it by ourselves. We're tired of grieving and, and wetting our pillows in the midnight hour. We're tired of struggling, wondering what the next day will bring. So, Lord, we decide this morning we're going to trust you. We're going to trust you like we've never done before. We, we've talked about it. We've prayed about it. We've preached about it. We've shouted about it. Now we're going to do something about it. We're going to trust you. We're going to leave our prayers at the altar. And we're not going to pick them up and take them back with us. We're not going to stick them back in our pocket. We're going to leave it right here. Because your shoulders are much bigger than ours. Your resources are greater than ours. And so now, Lord, we submit everything to you. All of our pleas, all of our fears, all of our frustrations, all of our disappointments, all of our lonely hours, all of our being misunderstood, all of our times of grieving and hurt, we leave it with you this morning. And we'll be so careful in all that we say and all that we do to give your name glory and praise this day believing that you already have heard and you're answering prayers, even when we don't recognize it, we know that you're moving on our behalf. And we say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give you all the praise. It is in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord, our Savior, 
and our soon coming king we pray. Hallelujah, God. Thank you already for bringing back that wayward child. Thank you already for fixing that bad situation. Thank you already when I thought you had forgotten about me. Thank you for the reminder this morning that you care about me, me, even me, right now. Oh, God, we celebrate. We're excited this morning. We bless you already. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah and amen. Somebody give God praise. I worship and I adore you. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you more than anything. Can you sing it like you mean it, church? Stand on your feet if you can. I love you, Jesus. I I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. and adore you I worship and adore just want to tell you just want to tell Lord I love you Lord I love you Lord I love you more than anything oh somebody give God praise in the house this day I, I like that song because it's it's personal. Um, it's personal, Amy. Uh, Micah, it's personal, man. When we sing that song, it's like there's nobody else in the room. Sam, it's like there's nobody else here, man. It's just, just you and the Lord. And what you're saying is, I love you, Jesus. Now, they might like you too. <laughs> they may love you too. But I'm letting you know, I, I love you, Jesus. And I worship and I adore you. And I just thought I'd take the time to just let you know I love you more than anything. I, I love you more than my new car. I love you more than my house. I love you more than all the stuff I got. I, I even love you more than my family because you gave me my family. I love you more than cranberry sauce. Justin, if you're listening online, I love you more than those butter cookies in that tin can. Anybody know what I'm talking about during Christmas time? You get that tin can with those butter cookies? I ain't supposed to be eating them, but I sure do like them. You better watch out. Man, you better stop. I love you, Jesus. I love you. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Oh, give God praise as we go into our scripture for today. (sighs) 
I got to preach, but I want to. Yeah. You ever feel like running sometimes? You just. Y'all stop, y'all stop, y'all stop, y'all stop, y'all stop. Matthew chapter 2, first 12 verses. See, y'all just be messing with people. Y'all, y'all, y'all need, y'all need. Matthew chapter 2. Matthew, I'm sorry. What, what did I say, Luke? I'm doing Matthew, <laughs> chapter 2. Uh, I gave y'all the wrong uh, scripture, but it should be Matthew, chapter number 2. <laughs> now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where? is he who has been born king of the Jews. For we saw his star when it rose, and we have come to worship him. There it is right there. That's what we come for, y'all. We come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him, and assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. And they told him in Bethlehem in Judea, so... Uh, for so it was written by the prophet, and you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. When Herod summoned the wise men secretly, secretly now, and ascertained from them what time the star appeared, he sent to them, he, he, he sent to, to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, Bring me word that I too may come and worship him. And after listening to the king, they went their way. And behold, the star that they had seen, when it rose and went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. Now, that's a bad dude that you got your own star. <laughs> then opening, uh, I'm sorry, and going into the house, they saw the child. Wait, let's go back to 10. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. I want to talk to us this morning from the topic, the wise men's passionate pursuit. The wise men's passionate pursuit. The question has to be asked this morning, what are you passionate about? What gets you excited? What gets you really going? Are you passionate about food, maybe sports, movies, or what's your favorite genre of music? Is it country and western? Is it, is it rap? Is it R&B? Is it new age? What, what gets you going? What wakes you up at night and gets you excited? What makes you text people? Did you see such and such? I'm watching a new series. For me, it's new. It's called Succession. It's a diabolical story about a super wealthy family, a super wealthy man and his family. They are billionaires. And for fun, they get in their two helicopters and fly to a remote island where they just hang out as a family. And they got people waiting, limousines everywhere they go. It's crazy. Y'all pray for your pastor. Because first lady looks at me sideways because she said, well, I'm going to bed. I said, I got to watch one more episode of Succession. <laughs> it's crazy. You can't trust anybody on that show. Everybody's for themselves. But it gets me going and it gets me excited because I'm sitting there like, I got to find out what happens next. <laughs> and I'm sitting there eating my popcorn and flipping through the channels. What gets you excited? What are you passionate about? What are you, what are you passionate about? You know, why passion? Because Passion separates the average athlete from the superstar. You got some people who know how to play a little bit of basketball, like will he think he could play? 
But see, then there's Pastor Howlton that can beat him. Passion. Passion wakes you up at night. Passion makes you get up early in the morning. Passion distinguishes the, uh, the casual Christian from the one who really wants to know God. And sometimes it's the same person. See, I used to be the casual Christian who just came into the church because it's Sunday and I needed a place to worship. But passion made me start digging deeper, showing up early, staying late. Passion made me start looking at the Bible differently and challenging the pastor. When I was younger and I was at another church, I would go to this thing called new members orientation. And I used to raise my hand and ask those tough questions you've always wanted to ask, and it seemed like nobody wanted to answer. So I found a pastor and said, I got a question for you. And I'd interrupt the class, and he said, well, what's the question, Russ? Y'all know him. And Pastor Winters would say, uh, he would answer my question. I'd raise my hand again. And I know everybody in the class would go, like, here go, go, uh, go Russ again. But I had these questions. What happens to babies when they die? Uh, what's the difference between you know, grace and mercy. What does God want me to do about drinking or not drinking? I had all these questions I wanted to ask. I was passionate. And I get into the church and I find out I started getting my questions answered. And I come to find out, uh, Sister Jackson, that God loves crazy people. <laughs> you better say amen right there because God loves you. He loves crazy people and I found out he loved me. But he didn't want me to stay crazy. He wanted me to know him, that I may know you. He wanted me to know him. And so I become passionate. What are you passionate about? Pray this prayer. I se I'm serious about this. You want things to change in your life? Seriously? Ask God to give you a passion for him. Say, Lord, I want to know you in a greater way. Sometimes, don't get mad at me when I say this. Sometimes, God allows some pain and heartache in your life to drive you to him. Because other ordinarily, I don't have time for God. I was going to come. I was going to come to church, but the movie was on. I was going to come, but I took a vacation. I was going to come, but I had a new golf club. I was going to come, but we decided to go to a show. I was going to come, but I woke up late. I was going to come, but the car didn't start. I was going to come, but the kids didn't want to wake up. You better wake them kids up. You better get in that car. You better get to church. You better develop a new passion for God or things will never change in your life. God is looking for people who have a passion, but not a passion for stuff, but a passion for him. What do you want to know about Philippians? says it like this in Philippians 3.10. He says, this is Paul writing, the apostle Paul writing. He says, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering and being made conformable unto his death. I want to know him. Now, this is odd because this is a man who, before he wrote this, he was stoned. Anybody ever hit you with a rock? He was stoned and stoned so many times, they thought he was dead, and they left him outside the city gate, and they went back in and left him out there dead. They said, that's the last time you'll be preaching Jesus up in here. But then God fixed it where he got him up, and he went back into the city, and guess what he did? He started preaching about Jesus again. You got a passion to do that. Here's another one. He was shipwrecked. Shipwrecked! All because of he was going to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. He went through shipwreck and stonings and being cold and being lonely and being frustrated. But he still had passion for God. Let me challenge you because I know enough people in this room to know that we've all been touched by death in this room. Has death ever come to your house? to a relative or a family member or a friend. I've had three this year. I was telling Brother Jones in the back, while I was discussing the second one, I heard about the third. I, ain't got to, I, can't, I can't bury my relatives fast enough. But God is allowing pain to call on him in a way we've never called before. See, it's one thing to say, Lord, uh, I thank you for the field food that we're about to receive for our body's nourishment. In Jesus' name, amen. And then you start eating. But when you have to get nasty, snotty, tears coming out your eyes, snot coming out your nose, and you're praying at 2 o'clock in the morning when you thought normally, Sister Tish, you'd be asleep. 
Or you wake up to go to the bathroom at 3 a.m. and you find yourself, you said, on the way back to the bed, I'm just going to drop on my knees. Because, Lord, just in case you didn't hear me earlier, Lord, here I am again. Passion. What are you passionate about that you want to change? What do you really want different to happen in your life going into 2022? What do you want differently even before Christmas Day gets here? What do you want? What are you passionate about? Are you passionate? I want a relationship with God that's different from what I had last year. I want a relationship with God that's different from what I had yesterday. I want a new relationship, a fresh relationship. Listen, let me help somebody just in case you think God has not listened to you. God is not too far away where he can't hear you and see you. God is not so far away to leave you this and longing for some help and hope in your life. He has planted a strong desire in your heart, the fact that you're even here today. Now, I know, I know you decided, well, I'm going for the kids because they're in a Christmas play. You know, God can use the kids to do whatever he needs to do. If it, could, it took the kids to get you here, that was still God moving. Yeah. Matter of fact, I, let's give God praise for the children this morning. They did a fantastic job. I, I wanted to be part of the show, but they wouldn't give me my own microphone. So I'm going to have a talk with Faith later on, Faith, because Faith knows how to get her own microphone. Uh, God is a rewarder. Anybody want a reward? God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek for him. So if you are not being rewarded, it's because you're not diligently searching for him. Let me say it like this. Let me say it like this. If I can tell you that I snuck into your house and I, I dropped a thousand dollars in your house in different parts of your house and I really did it. And I said, now it's up to you in the next 30 minutes to find all thousand dollars. You're going to tear that house apart. I found a hundred, his 200, his 300. There's still $700 missing. Somebody, y'all wake up. Y'all got the lights on. You're waking up people. You're turning over beds and mattresses. You're going through closets because you are diligently trying to find that money. God says, just like you're trying to find that $1,000, that's how I want you to search for me. Stop playing church. Stop playing with me. I want you to want me more than you want mama or daddy, more than sister or brother, more than friend or foe. I want you to know want me more than anything you're going to get for Christmas. I want you to want me because I'm the giver of life. I am the creator of the universe. I am Jesus Christ who sits high and looks low. I want y'all to want me that much. And I think some of you miss me. How did we get to this text? What's the background of this, this passage of scripture? Well, I'm glad you asked. Here in chapter 2, everybody say 2. Chapter 2 of Matthew. We're on the other side now of chapter 1. If you remember a few Sundays ago, we gave a lineage in chapter 1 of all the generations that came leading up to Jesus. Then Jesus shows up in the manger. This story today is after the manger. See, normally when we do the Christmas play, the Christmas pageants, we blend all the story together where the, the wise men come and the, 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 the shepherds come and the angels are there and everybody's at the manger. That's not so. Here in chapter 2, we are about two years removed from Jesus' birth. The shepherds have gone. They came and did what they were supposed to do. The angels pray, uh, praised God from heaven. The shepherds went into town and told, and told the people about Jesus. And two years later, the star had showed up uh, two years ago in the Far East, but it took the wise men, Magi, two years to follow the star that brought them to Bethlehem. You say, well, why it took them so long? We estimate that they had to travel about eight to 900 miles, and they didn't have freeways like you and I have today. So they're on camelback and they're on foot. And they're following a star, his star. Yeah. And so we're looking now at a different perspective than what Ma Luke gave us. Matthew tells a different story from Luke. Instead of shepherds, Matthew gives us magi from the east. 
Instead of a stable, Matthew takes us to Herod's palace. Instead of a manger, Matthew shows us gifts for the king. Instead of angels, Matthew tells us about dreams. I tell you that although our Christmas plays and everything tries to blend them all together, these wise men are a different bunch of guys placed long ago. Jerusalem, until Jesus had, circum had been circumcised and presented to the temple, was the place where Mary and Joseph and Jesus lived for a while. So here we are now, two years later, and that's why what you see in the story, when they got to the house, to the house, to the house where Mary and Joseph and the baby was, they're now no longer in a manger, they're in a house because he's two years old and they've been staying in this city for that long. We're talking about the wise man's passionate pursuit. you got to be passionate to keep traveling for two years and you don't have an airline ticket, no train ticket, no car, no, no GPS. You're on rough terrain going through territory that has bandits and criminals. You're going through rough terrain. you got to be passionate about God to follow him. Listen, they, they traveled on rough terrain for, for two years to see Jesus. And we get upset because we got to travel 20 minutes across town. I was going to be that pastor, but see, what happened was uh, the alarm didn't go off. I, the kids weren't ready. Uh, I, 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 I worked late yesterday. Listen, I used to work late in the operating room. I'd leave the operating room working all day, working all night. Call my wife and say, baby, I'm not coming home because I'm still in surgery. Leave surgery in my scrubs and go to church Sunday morning. I'd be sitting in the back of the sanctuary so I wouldn't distract people because I know they're sitting there looking at me past the house and sitting in the back, scrubs on. How he called himself a Christian wearing scrubs at church. You better stop. I'm in church. Passionate pursuit is what I'm talking about. How passionate are you? Are you willing to walk to church if your car don't start? Are you willing to take a bus? to Skybridge next Sunday if your car won't start. Now, because you're going to sit there and go like, how am I going to look riding a bus? You're going to look like a person riding a bus. Yeah. See, the problem is our pride, our arrogance, our egos get in the way. The wise man's passionate pursuit. Listen, I got five things, so I got to move quickly. Otherwise, Paul and Celeste might turn my microphone off. He said they already turned it off. <laughs> the wise... <laughs> Number one, if you keep your notes, there's some notepads in your pew. Here's some bullet points. Bullet point number one. The wise men had purpose. Everybody say purpose. If you don't have purpose, you can't get up in the morning. What's your reason for getting up? I got to go to work. What's your reason for getting up, Willie Blakely? I got some children I got to take care of. What's your reason for getting up? God gives us some reasons for giving up, waking up and getting up in the morning. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Listen, and if you won't get up, he sometimes will give you a reason. Uh, you know, stuff don't sound right. There's a bump in the night. There's something going on in the morning. Things don't sound right now. You know how it is. You nudge your spouse and say, baby, some noise going on. I can imagine in my imagination. I know what happened at, at a house one time, the place that I was living at. Linda said, I think I heard something. I said, I did too. Why don't you go check it out? Uh, uh, God gives us purpose. Now behold, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod, the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying, where is he who's been born king of the Jews? Here's the reason, the motivation. For we saw his star when it rose and we have come to worship him. Notice the, the who. The who are the magi. These are special, special, special class of priests. A special class of priests, but they're not Jewish priests. These are priests from, per from, from, from Persia. Persia is modern-day Iraq, Iran area. So these are guys from the east. They're not Jews. They are Iranians or Iraqis from the old days. Well, how did they know about Jesus? Because of Daniel. Don't you know that God loves you and me so much that he fixed things that even when you don't know he's working on your behalf, he's working on your behalf. And even when he's not working in your day today, he's already worked on your today, yesterday. He gave Daniel 
allowed them to be taken captive. Why were they taken captive? Here's the story. When God's people, the whole nation of Israel, wasn't acting right, wasn't honoring God, wasn't serving God, wasn't blessing God, but started acting like heathens, God allowed his own people to be taken captive by another nation. The upper part of the country was taken captive by Assyria, the lower nations by Babylon. But here's the blessing. Even while God is disciplining the whole country, he's blessing the people that they're going to. Ah! You can't put God's people in a bad house and not change those bad people. What happened is they took out Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and Daniel. And while they were there, they learned from Daniel about this, this prophecy about this person called Jesus. Now, they didn't know his name was going to be Jesus at that time, but they didn't know a Messiah was going to come. And they sit there and go like, hmm, these Hebrew people, these, these Jews, they got something going on. Let's research and find out about their God. So these wise men. They were astrologers and scientists and physicians, and they were, they were wise men, brilliant men. And they searched the text, and they said, based on what we have found of these Jewish people, the star ought to be showing up about now. And if they've been watching the stars for years, they realize there's a strange star that showed up suddenly. That star don't fit. And that star moves differently from all the other stars. That's it. That's it. That's the star. And they started following that star all the way to Bethlehem. They had a purpose. They passionately searched the Jewish literature to learn more about this God. This is the power of purpose in somebody's life, y'all. It makes you go places and do stuff that you ordinarily wouldn't do. I heard some athletes sit there and talk about playing in the NFL. And you don't get to play in the NFL and stay in the NFL unless you got purpose and unless you work hard at it. Because I learned, they said, every day you go to work, your job is on the line. Somebody's always trying to beat out your position so they can get it. So you're always not only trying to get it, but trying to keep it. They have purpose when they get up and go to work. They came to worship the newborn king of the Jews. That was their purpose, to worship the true and living God. They wanted to worship God in the flesh. God who left heaven came to earth. We want to see this God. If God is that tough, if he got it like that, when he got his own star, listen, I got my own car. <laughs> I got my own phone, but I ain't got no star that follows me around. This is somebody. He's got his own star. Notice, they, 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 it's a strange thing for the baby to be born king. Usually a child is born, and he or she is a prince or a princess. And they have to wait to mom and daddy either give up the throne or die. This was the, the scripture doesn't say, where is he born prince of the Jews? No, nah! the text says, where is he born king? In other words, he didn't have to wait to be installed as king. He's already king when he was born. That's, that, that's some power right there. And so we want to look into the main, and, we, and, and if you know you're coming to the king, you better come correct. Where is born king of the Jews? Uh, uh, even uh, Tatticus, who was a historian at the time, this is not in the Bible, but this is history. Tatticus, uh, he said he was expected through the whole east. It was expected through the whole eastern time, about the time that the king was to arrive in Judea and should rule the whole world. And why are they excited? that he's king of the Jews, wouldn't you expect, if you were writing this as a script in a movie or a play or a book, wouldn't you write, here he is, king of the whole world? That's how I would have written it. But they didn't say that. They said king of the Jews. Wait, hmm. I'm not so excited yet because if it's king of the Jews, how do I get in? How do I get counted? Because they knew that the king of the world came through the Jews. If this is the king of the Jews, that means you've been looking for That's for you too. And notice, it didn't come to the Jews, it came to the Gentiles. That's to let us know we fit too. Hey! We get it too. The Jew, he come through the Jews, but he's also coming for us. And just in case anybody get it twisted. 
and say, God only loves just them. Now he loves all of us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, born a Jew, that he may redeem the whole world, that he may redeem the whole world. Somebody ought to shout right there. I get included. I get included. I get included. Ah, I get included. Secondly, secondly, the wise man's passionate pursuit. Not only do the wise men have a purpose, but Herod had a problem. Herod had a problem. Herod. Herod was this paranoid, egotistic, schizophrenic acting king. He didn't trust nobody. And when he heard that some wise men were coming into town, see, the problem is Herod had power over his people and people under his jurisdiction. But when some new people of power and prestige come into town, you can't make them do nothing. You can't make them bow down to you. So all you can do is worry about them because, what, they're going to try to take my job. They're going to take my position. They're going to take my throne. And when they come in with the noise in their voices, talking about, where is he born, king of the Jews? I'm king here. What is this mess about somebody being born king? Uh, Well, tell them I need to talk to them. I want to talk to them. Herod was all upset. He was upset, I tell you. Uh, after inquiring of the priests and the scribes, he called his own scribes and priests together and said, tell me, what does the scripture say? What does the text say about what's going on here? These guys come rolling into town talking about God uh, has been born the king of the Jews. Uh, tell me what y'all know. The Magi was stirring up too much attention, and it wasn't on Herod. Can you imagine somebody who is so full of themselves that you wanted it to only be about you? Well, Herod, it ain't all about you, bro. Herod privately called the wise men. Why did he do it quietly? Because publicly he wanted to make it look like, I want to go and, you know, worship the young fella. But secretly he wanted to kill the young fella. Well, how do you know? The text makes it clear. The text makes it clear that Herod, listen to this, Herod had his favorite wife and his two sons murdered. That's his favorite wife. Because he feared that they would rise up and take his throne. Secondly, according to the study, they also feared, he was also upset because the people liked his wife and his sons more than they liked him. Imagine that. (laughs) So he just had him taken out. So if he'll take out his wife, take out his flesh and blood, he surely is going to take out or try to take out the Jesus, the Christ child. The wise man's passionate pursuit. The wise men had purpose. Herod had a problem, but the religious leaders had prophecy. In other words, they had the Bible. They had the text, if you will. That's a problem in this scripture because they knew better, but they didn't preach better. See, it's one thing to be a pastor and a preacher, and you got the text, but when you skip over those parts of scripture that you don't like yourself, or you don't want to talk about it because you don't want to offend some of the donors to the church, or you don't want people to leave and go down the streets at church number three, whatever that might be. See, you're messing up as a preacher because God didn't tell you to preach the part you like. He said preach all of it. He says for us to preach in season and out of season. All that means is preach when you feel like preaching. Preach when you don't feel like preaching. Preach when it's popular. Preach when it's not popular. Preach when it makes them say amen. Preach when they get upset and don't want to talk to you no more. Preach when they open up their wallets and they give to the church. Preach when they hold their pockets closed and they don't give no more tithes and offers. But preach anyhow. Preach anyhow. But these people, the scribes, the ones who knew the prophecy, they, they didn't give him the correct information. There's two explanations. Either they didn't care or they were scared of Herod. I think they were scared of Herod. Herod had everybody shaking in their boots. So they said what, they, what Herod wanted to hear. What Herod wanted to hear. Time out for that. Listen, y'all, let me be honest about something. I'm more afraid of God than I am about any president, any prince, any, any king, any royalty. I don't really care because, see, somebody may be able to destroy my body, but only God can take care of my soul. Share your faith, y'all, while you still got time. Don't be quiet. Don't be scared. Share your faith. 1 Peter 2.9 says, you are a chosen generation, 
a royal priesthood and a holy nation. In other words, you belong to God. You don't have the luxury anymore of being quiet. And let me just say this. And I know this sounds a little cold when I say this, but let me say it anyhow. For those of us who've been struggling with family members who have, we've lost, and everybody else who's still around, and you got to go to funerals, and you got to go to wakes, and you got to make plans and arrangements, I've done it over and over and over just this year alone. But this is also the optimal time when people's hearts are tender. Yes, and this is one of the best times for you to share your faith yes, with some of your own family members. Yes, your arm around them, beloved, and say, baby, where you got, where do y'all go to church right now? Well, we don't go, well, let me tell you something about Jesus. I'm serious. This is a time when people's hearts are open to the gospel. They want to know, what gives you hope? You're mourning, too. You're teary, too. I'm not taking that away from you. You miss them. You love them. But this is also your privilege, your opportunity to share what you do know. And you don't have to know everything that I know as a pastor. Share what you do know. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And then look at him and say, and that means you too. God loves you so much. He wants to make sure that when you go, do you know? And ask him this question. Here's a tough one. Do you know for sure that if you die today and we have to come to your wake, that you're going to be in heaven? Or you're going to need air conditioning. Where are you going to be? This is the optimal time to share. This is the optimal time to share. The chief priests and the scribes were educated men. They were out sharing with everybody else. And how do we know that this is true? Micah, the Old Testament prophet, Micah, he said this was going to happen. Micah tells where the promised Messiah would be born. He promised. He said, so listen, y'all, we got to be able to speak up and tell it. Tell it. The wise man's passionate pursuit. Number four, the wise man had the prince of peace. Ah, the wise man had the prince of peace. At verse 9, after listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose before until they came to rest over the place where the child was. In other words, while they were in talking with King Herod, the star disappeared. Then they go from talking to King Herod to talking to the religious leaders to find out what does the text say. But while he's talking with the religious leaders, the star is not there. I think the star showed up because these wise men who had traveled for two years of their lives and searched the text, they needed some encouragement. Anybody need encouragement? Just wave your hand and say, Lord, this morning, let me hear you, this morning, Y'all not acting like y'all with me today. Lord, this morning, I need some encouragement. Just wave your hand and say, Lord, I need some encouragement. I've got enough bad news on CNN and Fox and ABC and CBS and NBC and, and, and Internet and Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat and TikTok. I got enough bad news. Lord, this morning, I need some good news. Every now and then, God will show up in our situation and just encourage us, give us some good news. Because the story goes on to say, and suddenly, after they finished talking to King Herod, who wants to kill the baby, after they finished talking to the scribes who act like they don't know anything about the Bible, suddenly they go outside and the star is back. God says, I'm still with you. I never lose you. I'll never leave you or forsake you. Aren't you glad? That God gives us help and hope in times when we need encouragement during our times of grief and frustration. The star suddenly showed up, and the star moved. And as it moved, it went to where the child was, and then it just stood still. In other words, I'm waiting on y'all now. I done moved to where the baby is, and I'm shining my light right down there on that manger. Or in, on the house where the baby is. On the house where they went to the house. And guess what they found when they got to the house? They found Mary and the baby cuddled together, taking care of her little toddler child. When they saw the star standing over where the child was, the scripture says they rejoiced. And this ain't just, oh, and they was, oh, there he is. Oh, he ain't cute. No, they were, they were beside themselves kind of rejoicing. This is that kind of rejoicing where you're crying, you're so excited, you don't know what to do with your emotions and your feelings. They've been traveling, they've been reading the scriptures, they've been traveling for years, and they've been discouraged by the king, discouraged by the cr crowds, discouraged by the scribes. And suddenly, everything they thought, they, th they thought was worth it is now worth it. God had their purpose, meaning. 
And when they come together over the house, they saw the child with Mary and fell down. That's what real worship is. Did you know that real worship, according to the definition in the text, means to bow down and put your feet. That's what it means. We don't do it. We don't do it. Oh, did we have good prayer and pray? Did we have good worship service today? Eh, sort of. What you really meant was we had good praise. See, praise is audible and it's public. Worship could be reading the text. Worship could be pray, praying to God in your closet. Worship could be giving clothes to the needy. Worship could be studying the word of God for yourself. Worship. But if you're going to do a public worship, public worship means you, you, you take off your fine clothes if they get in the way. And you submit to God. And you put your head down on the ground and you're letting God know that you are greater than me. I'm so low. I put my head down when you come by. Even the demons know worship. When Jesus came up out of, out of the sea and he came to the land of Gadaria and there's a man full of demons and the demonic man runs up to Jesus naked in, a, in, the, in the graveyard, runs up to Jesus and as soon as he gets to Jesus, the demons inside the man says, Jesus! Thou son of God. But before he speaks, he falls. The scripture says he falls down and he says, Jesus, let me do it right. Jesus, son of God, or thou come hither to torment us before the time. Even the demons got enough sense to bow down when the prince of peace shows up. I think we got it messed up. We're more arrogant than the demons. We walk into the church and we expect there to be a pew. We expect there to be pads in here. We expect there to be air conditioning. We expect there to be lights. We want to be comfortable when we worship. Sometimes God got to take you to a place where you have to get down on your knees. I'm afraid one of the reasons we don't get our prayers answered. Listen to this. Listen. I'm afraid one of the reasons we don't get some of our prayers answered is we don't know how to worship God. We go in there and we sit there and we cross our legs, sip our coffee. Well, Lord, you know, I need you to bless me. I'm getting ready to go ahead and get this job. I need you to make it come through for me. All right? I holler at you later, dog. And we walk away. And we think God going to answer that mess. He ain't answering that. You, there was no humility there. There was no communication with God. There. You think God going to bless that? You think you equal with him where you can just cross your legs, drink your coffee, and tell him what you want. He ain't no genie that you rub the lamp and he just said, poof, there it is. You better learn to take your shoes off like Moses did at the burning bush. God talked to him through the flame. Said, Moses, take your shoes off. Cut the ground you're standing on is holy ground. There are many times, y'all, we don't take our shoes off. We don't take our arrogance off. We don't bow down. We don't submit to God. And we wonder why we don't get our prayers answered. They fell down. Then they did something else. They gave him gifts. They gave him gifts. In Eastern times, you didn't show up before a monarch without bringing gifts. And you offered a gift. You don't come empty-handed. Y'all, when we come to God, we bring, Sister Beverly, the sacrifice of praise. And the reason I call it a sacrifice, because the sacrifice is you give up something that you want for something that's more important. And praise the moment is what's needed. You got me? And so what he says is, I know you want to be quiet. I know you don't want to make stir up a mess. I know you don't want to attract attention. And you're not doing it for your glory. But you're doing it because I deserve it. Ah, when God has blessed you, you ought to give him some praise. You ought to give him some praise. And you shouldn't have to wait for the praise team to Sister Beverly to get, to get the music started before you stand and pray. Listen, you ought to enter his courts with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. So when the doors open in the church, before you go through these double doors, as soon as you walk in and, and you see Sister Janet and Sister Labrica and, and, and the Joneses and others out there welcoming you, you should come in going like, hallelujah. Then you should be so loud, you can't hear the praise team. You don't need to be pumped up to praise. You praise because of who God is. And if that ain't enough, praise him for what he's done for you. Did you walk in with shoes on? Give God some Did you walk in with clothes? Give God some praise. Did you walk in with your right mind? Give God some praise. We sit times and we sit there and, and we ask people, do you have any prayer requests? No, I can't think of anything. Can you breathe? Then give God some praise. We try to 
think we're looking for the super, super spiritual stuff. We're waiting for the, the sky to split open before we give God some praise. Uh, and they brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Why those three things? Gold speaks of the king that God is. Frankincense uh, 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 speaks of his, of his deity and how we lift up praises to him. And as the smoke goes up. And myrrh represents the death that he would, he would share for you and me, that he may redeem us. Fifthly, the Magi had protection. The Magi had protection. What do you mean he had protection? After all this had happened, their task was accomplished. They read the text. They followed the star. They talked to King Herod. They talked to the scribes. They found the Christ child. Now they are excited. We got it. It took years to put the puzzle together. We finally accomplished it. And God taps him on the shoulder and says, listen, y'all, before you go home, <laughs> before you go home, don't go home the same way you came. Because, see, the way you came is corrupt. There's a corrupt king ready to take you out. He only wants you for what you know. And as soon as you give him the information, he's going to kill you and the Christ child. I need you to go home a different way. Church, whatever you've been through in your life, your past is your past. And some of the stuff in our past is corrupt. And God said, I don't need you to go back that way no more. I need you to go home a different way. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, we need to go home a different way. Don't go home the same way. Oh, we have to give up some things that we got used to. Some of our old friends, our old habits, our old viewing opportunities, our old ways of talking, our old ways of thinking, our old ways of celebrating, our old ways of being us, our old ways of I just got to be myself. Well, sweetheart, yourself is what got you in trouble. We got to go home a different way. We're a new creature, a new creation made in Jesus Christ. He don't want us to go back to what we used to do. He don't want us to go back and drink what we used to drink. He don't want us to go out and hang out with some of the friends we used to hang out with. He said, I need you to go home a different way. So they had protection. Aren't you glad that God gives us protection and sends us home a different way? Aren't you glad that on your way to glory, he sent you by sky bridge to say, I need you to go home a different way. High five at least somebody near you if you can touch them if it's okay. And say, go home a different way. Go home a different way. Go home a different way. God is able. God loves us. Somebody give God praise in the house. See, that was a test right there. I just said, somebody give God praise. And y'all said, oh, that, 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 was, that was nice. He just talked to you, encouraged you. He just informed you. He just helped you get through COVID and all the craziness that's been happening in 2022 and 2021. And I said, now somebody give God praise. Y'all go, oh, that, that, was, that, was, that was nice. That was cute. You missed it. See, that was your opportunity to stand up on your feet and say, Lord, if it had not been for you on my side, I wouldn't be breathing right now. So let's try that one more time. Here's the test. If God has blessed you and encouraged you, regardless of whether you're introvert or extrovert, young or old, black or white, somebody give God praise on our way to Christmas. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? He's the on-time God, and he fixes it for us, y'all. Yes, he does. He fixes it for us. Don't you dare go into Christmas the same way you've been going into Christmas. Matter of fact, Christmas, when y'all get to Christmas dinner this year, y'all need to stop what you're doing. Don't cut no ham. Don't slice no turkey. Don't fix no tamales. Don't eat nothing until somebody reads Scripture and somebody pray. Somebody read scripture and somebody pray. You can go to Luke 2. For unto us is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. This is the Christ child. Somebody needs to read that in your house. If you're single, read it by yourself. If you got friends over, read it with them. If they say, well, we don't, I don't want you shoving your religion down my throat. I don't want to hear all that. You say, well, go home then. 
because my God, I'm not ashamed of him. He brought me this far by faith. Do I have a witness in the house? Lord, we bless you. We love you. We thank you. As we go into this time of celebrating your birth, your incarnation, which led to your death and your resurrection, and then finally to your ascension. And one day, dear God, we want to look up in the sky and see you coming back in glory. But until that day, help us to be like the wise men, passionately seeking you in all that we do. Realizing, oh God, that there's a reward for those who passionately seek you. Thank you, oh God, for these words, for this challenge, for this encouragement. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Listen, if you're in the building today and uh, I want you to know before you go into Christmas time that there's five points that you need to know and share with others. And those who you are looking, watching us on Facebook Live and YouTube and other platforms delayed later on. Five points of this gift I want to give you at Christmas time. The gift is heaven is a free gift. The Bible says the gift of God is eternal life. Secondly, everybody's a sinner. The Bible says for all have sinned and come short of the glory. So none of us can get in. So what are we going to do? Why are you telling us then, Pastor? Why are you just messing with our emotions, jerking us around? No, because number three, God loves you. But he don't like your sin. He don't like the stuff you say, the stuff you think, the stuff you do. Number four, he fixed it for us in the person of Jesus Christ. The baby born in the manger that would die in the, in, in, in the tomb and be buried in the tomb, but be resurrected three days later. The same God, born of a virgin Mary. And fifthly, you can receive that free gift by faith. Everybody say faith. faith. Faith is trusting in Jesus Christ alone and nothing else. In other words, we can't get ourselves ready enough to come to Christ. We can't say, well, God, I got so much dirt, so much baggage, so much mess in my life. I need to straighten up before I come to you. No, no, no. He says, come to me just as you are. Let me clean you up because I'll clean you up from the inside out. If you clean up the outside, only the outside would look good. Your clothes might look nice but your heart is still corrupt and dark. Let God fix you today on this Christmas. So if you're in the building today and you don't have a church home and you want to be part of Skybridge Church, I'd love to have you here. I'm just going to ask you, there's people standing along the wall. There's two people over here and there's a person over here. Just stand up and go over to them and say, I want to join Skybridge Church. I want to be part of this family. I want to be part of this teaching. I want to be part of the growth. I want to be new again. I want to be passionate about what God is doing in my life. And I want to be part of this church family. Just go to them right now. I, I mean, right now, while the music's playing, just move over to the side. I see you, my brother. God bless you, Walter. I see you. <laughs> Secondly, if you're here today and you have never accepted Jesus or you've been confused about it and you want somebody to explain it to you better than I just did, just go to one of these people and say, listen, I want to accept Jesus into my heart, maybe for the first time in my life. Maybe I've been playing church, and now I really get it, and I want that in my life. Go into the Christmas season. If that's you, just move to one of our counselors right now, right now. We're just going to celebrate you. Thirdly, if you're here today, and you are a backslider, in other words, you grew up in the church or you've been in the church, but you went back to your old but now you want to recommit and come back like I did like I did back in 1987. I did it too. So you're not by yourself. So don't sit there and think somebody's going to look at you funny. There's no embarrassing moments. Just move to one of our counselors and say, I want to recommit my life. Maybe, number four, you've never been baptized since you've been an adult. If that's you, just move to one of our counselors and say, I want to get baptized. I want to know that when I die, I'm going to go to heaven, and I want to take on the sign of my through baptism. If that's you, just move to one of our counselors right now. Fifthly, number five, if you need prayer outside of what we did a few minutes ago, you want somebody to pray with you and walk with you through these dark times in your life, just move to one of these counselors and say, pray with me about whatever the situation is. We're waiting on you. We're going to have to be for a moment. We're going to pray 
and then we're going to dismiss. Oh, we got we got some announcements. We got some announcements. But for the moment, listen. Just listen. This is for you. This moment is for you. Pray. Just pray. Just pray. I see you. God bless you. God bless you. They're moving. Give God praise. I see you. I see you. God bless you. God bless you. Announcements for Sunday, December 19, 2021. Merry Christmas! We have a new member in the church today, y'all, Brother Walter. Walter! Bless you, my brother. We got to get some information from you before you leave today. Let's be in prayer also uh, for those who are still making decisions be in prayer also for the Anderson family. Brother Mike Anderson is now gone home. He uh, had his surgery and he's doing well. They're at home. Amen. Be in prayer for those who are traveling during this, this busy season. A lot of traveling to visit family. Be in prayer for those who are traveling, but it's not so much festive. It's, 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 it's a, 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 a somber time. Certainly be in prayer. Sister LaShonda, Wave your hand if you don't mind, if you don't mind. Listen, y'all, she lost her dad, and then she lost her sister. Somebody needs to put their arms around her and encourage her before they leave today. And then be in prayer for the Jones family. She and Nate and Cleo and Bertha in the back uh, lost uh, our, 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 our church member, Sister Alice. Brother Al is away today. Be in prayer for Brother Al and for this family uh, as they go through saying goodbye. It's tough. It's tough. We're not going to have a celebration here right now, a homegoing celebration. Uh, Sister Alice is being uh, sent home to California for the burial there, and we'll find out more information about the dates and time later. But for now, what's needed is your smiling faces, your handshake, your hugs, your encouragement for the Joneses. Amen? We've all been there. We've been there. We've been there. And so we know how tough it can be, especially during the holidays. So our prayers are with you guys. We love you guys dearly. And we're praying for you. Amen? Listen, we got some announcements we want to share with you this morning before we go. So you can stay standing or you can sit down, but check out our announcements. we got about two minutes here, and we'll be done. Yes. You need me to come up there? Merry Christmas from Pastor Russell Houghton, First Lady Linda Houghton, and the entire Houghton family to the Skybridge family and friends. May God continue to bless each of you. Israel, can you go upstairs and... Uh your dad now push the button to the left good morning Skybridge these are your announcements for Sunday December 19 2021 Merry Christmas from Pastor Russell Houghton First Lady Linda Houghton and the entire Halton family to the Skybridge family and friends. May God continue to bless each of you. 
Men, the next meeting of the Men's Ministry Tuesday Tune-Up will be Tuesday, December 28th at 7.30 p.m. via Zoom. You don't want to miss it. Contact Brother Willie Jackson for more information. Ladies, our Bridge to Womanhood Women's Ministry will hold their next meeting on Saturday, January 28th at 9 a.m. via Zoom. I'm coming to that. You don't want to miss this one either. Contact Sister Amy Jackson for more information. Y'all had too much fun. Tift. Bridge Kids. The next Bridge Kids Children's Ministry meeting will be held Wednesday, December 29th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Please contact Sister Tiffany Blakely for more information. Skybridge. Want to help out, but not quite sure what to do? Well, Skybridge Church is seeking a volunteer office assistant. If you possess the following skills, you're available two days a week, you're proficient in Microsoft Office Suite, you have good correspondence skills, good organizational skills, and great communication skills, we're looking for you. Please contact Pastor Houghton at the church office at 210-375-9031. The Skybridge Bookstore is in need of a ministry leader for our bookstore operations. Contact the church office for more details. Are you dealing with the loss of a loved one? You don't have to grieve alone. Grief Share is an available resource to give emotional and spiritual support during this time. Join a support group in your area by going to www.griefshare.com Want to give? We offer four different ways to give. You can go online at skybridgechurch.org or you can give through your smartphone by downloading the Skybridge app. Just type Skybridge in your app or Play Store. You can give through the mail or right here at church on Sunday mornings. To give in church today, an usher or a greeter will be standing by at the end of worship service. Happy birthday! A big happy birthday to Eric Mitchell. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Hey! You notice a new voice on there? Yes. Sister Terry Boyd, wave your hands in the air. <laughs> Let's stand and get ready to go. Tino's going to sing us out. Uh, go ahead, Tino. Oh! That's my, that's my man right there. We have a good time up in here. Listen, give God praise for our praise team this morning. Amen. And uh, on yesterday, Sister Linda Housen uh, led us in our outreach, a uh, Christmas outreach event where we had a Christmas sale, but everything in the church was for free. People just come in and they take anything that was donated. We, we donated tablefuls of men's clothes, women and children's clothes, toys, uh, appliances. There were some appliances that left my house. Um, I'm tracking people. I got stuff on the people's stuff that I can go by and pick it up. And brothers, y'all, thank you for your donation of the men's clothes. We really needed that. Thank you so much, all of you who donated some of the men's stuff. Happy birthday, Eric, coming up. And, and there's our new member. Thank you, uh, Walt. Good to see you, my brother. God bless you. Thank God for our band over here, Darion and Isaiah up in the house, in the house. You going to sing today? You gonna sing something? Hmm? He goes, hmm? All right, well, let's just pray then. If you're not gonna sing, let's pray. Bless your name, and we thank you so much. And we found out what's important about a passionate pursuit of you. Help us as we go to Christmas Day that during this season we passionately, passionately look to know you in a greater way, not just on Sunday mornings, 
but to do something different. Help us as we celebrate your birth on that day. Help us to read your word and pray to you before we open up gifts and start talking about our stuff, what we have or don't have, what we got or didn't get. Help us to know we got salvation through Christ Jesus. Now, as we lift our hands for the last time of this worship study, with thanksgiving to you, God, for our gifts of membership and for our guests that are here today. To you, O oh God, who are able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before your glorious presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. We love you. We praise you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. God bless you.